being silly, right? Y'all know I'm kind of being serious. Uh, <laughs> I want to help you today. Do me a favor. Everybody stand up on their feet. Turn your Bible to Acts chapter 10. Are y'all tired already? Tell the truth. Some of y'all done settled already. You settled in your seat. Come on and take your seat. Okay, but, but, but I have a word that will help you today. Okay, and, and thankful for the two or three that heard me. I said, I have a word that will help you today. I believe that this, I believe that this series, I want, I want you to hear me before I start reading. And, and, and I, I, I wrote this down this morning. But I believe that this series will, devi- will define your 2020. See, you can't get ready for 2020 in 2020. You got to get ready for 2020 right now. And I think a lot of, a lot of people are going to be talking about vision in 2020, and I'm all for it. You know, that's easy, right? 2020 vision, God going to do a 2020 vision in 2020. He's going to get you right. I get it. I'm, I might say it myself. But I want to let you know something, God chases. God said, I'm about to start opening doors for the people of this church in 2020. He says, I'm supposed, I'm about to start. Hear, my, hear me right here. I don't want you to celebrate. In fact, do me a favor and raise your hands and receive this word. God said he's going he's gonna to start opening doors in your life. He's going to start opening financial doors. He's going to start opening doors in your relational situation. God said, I'm about to give you avenues and opportunities for your future. I wonder if anybody can believe that right now in fact if you believe it put your phone down put your hands together and just say god thank you i believe it and i receive it that the door is about to start opening i'm gonna change it up let's go to chapter 12 first i'll come back to chapter 10 chapter 12 verse 1 uh x chapter 12 verse 1 Acts. We're still in Acts. Chapter 12, verse 1. Okay? Y'all with me? Man, they so good back there, man. They good back there. Now, about the time Herod the king laid hands on someone who belonged to the church of Jesus Christ. Man, you got to pay attention to what the Bible is saying. Right about the time, that, see, see, people think they can put their hands on you, they can put their mouth on you, they can tell you, uh, they can curse your future, but I'm telling you right now that anybody who curses you is cursed. If I'm a priest, if I'm a priest, then if you try to curse a priest, you're just going to turn that curse back on yourself. This is a holy biblical revelation of I'm rubber, you glue, whatever you say. All right, y'all not ready to have church today. He says, about the time that Herod the king laid hands on someone who belonged to the church of Jesus Christ, in order to mistreat them, he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, when he saw that, you can always get somebody to clap. Oh, hear me right here. You can always get an applause when you're trying to be petty. You can always be apl- get applause when you're trying to hurt somebody. You can always get applause when you... Y'all not with me today. And, and when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread when he had seized him and put him into prison, delivering him to four squads. Somebody say four squads. Four squads. Delivering him to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending the Passover to bring him out... Be- intending after the Passover to bring him out before the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church of God. Is anybody praying for somebody today? Is anybody praying for somebody else? On the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and guards in front of the door were watching over the prison and behold the angel of the Lord suddenly appeared and light shone into the cell and he struck Peter on the side wait what why get hit and he struck Peter on his side and woke him up saying get up quickly somebody say get up quickly and his chains instantly fell off oh thank you Jesus And the angel said to him, gird yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And then he said to him, now wrap your cloak around you and follow me. 
and he went out and continued to follow. Hear me right here. He went out and continued to follow, and he did not know that what was being done by this angel was real. He thought it was a dream. He thought, oh, hear me right here. God is about to start blessing you so good. You say, I can't believe this is my life. I can't believe this is real. I can't believe this is what's happening. He said, he said, he said, he, he, oh, thank you, Jesus. But he went out and continued to follow, and he did not know what was being done by this angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and second door, somebody say when they passed the first and second door, they came, they came to seeing the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened for them by itself. They passed the first door. They passed the second door. Then the third door opened. Oh, uh, y'all not with me today. And they went out and went along on the street. Immediately, the angel departed from him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for sure that the Lord has sent forth his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod. And from all the Jewish people were expecting. And when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark where many had been gathered together and were praying. I'm almost done. Y'all come, come with me. When he knocked at the door of the gate, a servant girl named Rhoda came out to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, she didn't even see his face. She just heard his voice. When she recognized Peter's voice and because of her joy, she did not open the gate, but she ran in and announced that Peter was standing at the gate. And they said to her, you crazy. You're going to start a what? You crazy. You gonna do? You gonna buy a what? You crazy? You gonna buy a house? You gonna buy an investment property? You crazy? You gonna start a business? You crazy? You gonna go back to school? You crazy? I'm just trying to help somebody right here. He said, "They said, they said, they said, you you must be crazy." Uh, 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 some versions of the Bible say you gone mad. Some version of the Bible says you out your mind. My brother would say you out your racket bracket. I don't know what it means, but it sounds funny every time he said, it. boy, you out your racket bracket. All right. But she kept insisting that it was so. They kept saying, no, no, no. It's got to be an angel. It must be his angel. But Peter continued knocking. But Peter continued knocking. But Peter continued knocking. But Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door, they saw him and were amazed father in the name of jesus lord we thank you we love you we give you glory lord help me help them in jesus name i pray amen and amen high five somebody and say i'm going through the door i'm going through the door i i, I want to give you just a, a a few quick little points and then we're gonna we're gonna get out of here amen I, i'm not gonna be in here all day uh with you guys i i, I want to move us forward and we're gonna have a couple of weeks to break this all this information out are, are y'all with me today but i want to talk to you about a season where where peter is imprisoned i want to talk to you about a season where peter is imprisoned uh but before i do that i want to give you uh, just a little backdrop about what this series is going to be about now some of you guys have heard uh the title you say okay doors it makes sense we read a few, couple of scriptures pastor dante said doors were allowed on a, on a certain part so I, I think we're talking about doors you have assumed correctly your discernment is on point we're going to be talking about doors for these next few weeks somebody say open the door but but I, I want you to understand something. You, you need to get your definition of doors correct. You need to have a correct understanding of doors before we move forward into this series. The first thing is this. I want you to understand that a door is a portal to a new place. Okay? A door is a portal to a new place. Whenever you see a door, you know that there's a portal there. And when I see a door, that means there's a portal to a new place, to a new space, to a space that I didn't uh, initially have access to. So doors are portals to new places. I'm going to give you another definition. Doors are designed to give access. Okay? Doors are designed to give access. If I see a door, then, then normally I, I don't have access to what's on the other side of that door. Does that make sense? 
I, I, I have to be given access to what's on the side on the other side of that door. And so if I wanted something protected, if I wanted something hidden, I, I would put it behind the door and then I would give people, oh, help me right here, Lord. And then I would give certain people access to what was behind the door. Pastor Dante, what are you talking about? What I'm talking about is some people need access to you and some people don't. Some people need access to places in your heart. Some people don't. That's what the door is designed to do. Are y'all with me today? So the doors are designed to give or prevent access. Are y'all with me today? Here's, an, here's another definition. Doors are a security mechanism mean to keep, mean, uh, meant to keep things in or to keep things out. Are y'all with me today? Doors are security mechanism. So I, so I got to put some doors around my life, uh, uh, around my foundations, around some things that, uh, that some things that I believe to be true, they, they can't be tested. I can't let you into this place. Are y'all with me today? Because, I, because it's the solid rock of my foundation. So I, got, I put a door here and I, I don't give everybody access to me. Oh, Jesus. I don't give everybody access to my life. I don't give everybody access to my heart. I, I believe that doors are intentionally placed in spaces where there is a portal to another place, but everybody not supposed to be there. Why is that valuable, PD? Well, because... When God gives me access to a place where everybody else doesn't have access, what he's showing me is favor. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. You know, what he's showing me is his favor. So when he opens a door for me, I, oftentimes when I step through the door, he closes the door. <laughs> and you got to say, okay, God, well, if you opened it for me, specifically for me, and a lot of times this is our problem because we keep trying to go in doors we saw other people go in. Some of y'all are pulling on the handle to somebody else's blessing, pulling on the handle to somebody else's dream, pulling on the handle to somebody else's prosperity. And God keeps saying, no, if you just move over two steps, you'll realize that the door for you is open now. But if, I, if you try to follow them through the door. Uh. So Peter is in prison. Somebody say Peter's in prison. Verse 6 says this, on the very night when, he had, uh, when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Peter was sleeping in prison. He was in prison, but he was sleeping. He was sleeping in prison. He was in prison, but he was sleeping. Some of y'all have gotten way too comfortable in your prison. Some of y'all have gotten way too oh man. Some of y'all have gotten way too comfortable in, in, in your prison situation. And what God has said, what God is saying in this season is you need to wake up, pay attention, smell the coffee. I'm moving you to a new place. I'm moving you to a new situation. I'm moving you through a new door. I'm, I'm giving you a portal to a new place in your life, but you can't find it if you sleep. You can't find it if you sleep. When I was growing up, people say, man, don't sleep on me, man. Don't, don't sleep on me, man. I, man, I'm, I'm whatever I am. Don't sleep on me. But some of y'all sleep on yourselves. You sleep on what you could do, on what you could be, on what you could have. God says, you're, God told me to tell God Chasers Church, it's too many of y'all sleeping. Sleeping on your future. Sleeping on who you are, sleeping on who your kids could be, if they have the right opportunities, if you put them in the right places, you're, you're, you're sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on your life, sleeping on what God promised you. you some of you, oh, hear me right here. The promises of God for your life are yes and amen, but you can never have them if you're going to be asleep. God is calling some of y'all to wake up in this season. Wake up to your future. Wake up to what God has promised you. Wake up to, you, some of y'all used to have a good relationship with God where you prayed and you believed and you heard word. The man of God would say, hey, you're going to be this or you're going to be that. And some of y'all have just given up on that dream. You want to know the problem with prophecy? The problem with prophecy oftentimes is that God is not in time. This is the problem with prophecy. Because oftentimes a prophet will release a word and you'll bind that word by the time that you live in. Y'all don't feel like having church today. You'll bind that word by the time that you live in. And, 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 and what will happen is if God don't do it in a certain amount of time, you'll go to sleep. 
If God don't do it in a certain amount of time, and what and what's happened is some of y'all have some of y'all have gotten to the place where you go, you went to sleep on the word that God gave you. If God gave you a promise, his promises are yes and amen. You can't go to sleep on what he gave you. Are you with me today? But Peter is in his, he, he's in this place sleeping. He's gotten too comfortable, too comfortable in a temporary place. Listen, don't, don't, don't get so comfortable in a temporary place. Some of y'all have made permanency out of your temporary situation. Some of y'all, you think, you, you think your life got to always be like that. You think your wife got to always be like that. You think your husband going to always be like that. God said, no, 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 this is a temporary thing. If I brought you to it, I can get you. We talked about this before, right? If I brought you to it, I can get you through it. But you got to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in him. Are y'all with me today? So on this very night, also, this, I love this part, Pastor Kevin. The Bible says that he was bound to two soldiers. He was bound on his left and right to two soldiers. Uh, 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 oftentimes, your prison is people. And it's not the door that you got to escape. It's the two soldiers you tied to. Oh, yeah. I'm preaching better than y'all Some of y'all tied. No, hear me right here. Some of y'all tied to some people who is there. It's their permanent place. Where, where you are is their permanent place. And what happened is you tied yourself, you connected to yourself, to somebody who truly is not going to move any further than they are right now. Those people, oh, their purpose was the prison. The, the prison guard's purpose was the prison. But your purpose is not the prison. But if you chain to people whose purpose, oh, Jesus, is your temporary place, you'll be permanently stuck in a temporary place. Am I telling you to leave everybody? No. What I'm telling you to do is, is, is recognize who going to be here and who going to be here. And if you can't, listen, I, I, let me help you right here. If you can't learn how to define where people are in their life, then you'll never get to the place where God wants you to be in yours. Some people are, this is as far as they're going to go. They can't go any further than this. And if you tie to those people, you're going to be stuck in the same place. Somebody say doors. I don't want to be stuck in the same place. So I need to find the portal, the pathway. I need to find the place where God is going to move me from this place to another place. So I, 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 I got to untie myself from, from poor people. I got to not love poor people. No, you can love everybody. I can't be tied to you. Oh, yeah. I got to untie myself from people who live a life of sin. What do you mean? I love my family and my family. And kids. Yeah, I, I love them. I can't be tied to them. God is trying to move me to a new level. He's trying to move me to a new place, a new plane. And he can't do that if I'm tied to old stuff, old people, old environments. You're still texting him. Y'all broke up a hundred years ago. He still got access to you. Anytime he want to talk to you, he just open the. Somebody say doors. Everybody shouldn't have access to you. Do you hear me right here? Yeah, everybody can't have access to you. There are some people that you, know, you got to get to a place where you can go back and bless them. But if you stay where they are, then no, you can't bless them. They can't bless you. We all broke. No, I got to get to a place where I can come back and say, okay, now I want to bless you. Does that make sense? So I can't be tied to you if I'm going to bless you. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, some of you have gotten too comfortable in temp temporary places. Uh, some of y'all are sleeping between two soldiers. Here's another one. Some of y'all are, 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 are tied up in chains of your own creation. You tied up in chains of your own creation. Listen, listen. Notice, we talked about last week that John the Baptist, uh, King Herod, uh, was going to cut his head off. Remember? He said, are you the one or shall I look for another? Because I'm about to get my hair cut off. Are y'all with me today? 
So now, now the, the other John, the other John has gotten his hair cut off. John, the brother of Jesus, he got his cut, hair cut off. Now Peter is about to get his hair cut off. What are you talking about, Pastor Dante? Be careful that somebody's trying to cut off your thinking. Be careful that somebody's trying to cut off your head. Somebody's trying to make you not think. So, people think that somehow Christianity is just about believing and not thinking. No, 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 no. Now, yes, you got to believe. It's got to be a faith move. But you don't lose your brain when you become a Christian. Y'all ain't hearing me today. You don't lose your brain. And what the devil wants to do, he wants to get to your mind. He wants to get to your brain. If he can cut off your head, then he can get you to a place where you, where you don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. You have no expectation. And some of y'all are, are hands and torso, but no head. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life, where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to Sit down. Write it down. Think about it. You still got your head. I, I could really go deep with this because some of y'all, PD, these drugs is from the ground, all right? They're trying to take your head. It, it, it's, it's messing with your thinking. That's what it's about. Anything that, me oh, yeah, all, all right, I'm preaching in my church now. Anything that messes with your thinking is bad for you. I don't care if it was prescribed or not. Anything. That messes with your thing. Let this mind be with you. That would be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Anything that messes with your head is bad for you. You need to be careful about what you. Yeah, because there's some drinkers in here getting mad at the weed smokers. Anything that messes with your head. You created the chains and now you're bound by them. You created the chains and now you're bound by them. You created the chains. It used to be fun. Now you can't stop. Oh, I could stop if I want to. Okay, try. If I wanted to, PD, I could try. 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 The devil's trying to. Are y'all with me today? All right. So you got to be careful about the chains. God. God it used to be an old Wu-Tang song that said, protect your neck. <laughs> I'm too young for y'all. That's y'all, y'all. That's what's wrong right there. Protect. Look, at it's some, it's some uh, young men over there laughing hard, boy. They're like, yeah, Wu-Tang. Okay, protect your neck. Amen. <laughs> God, you, need, you need to have your full head. You need to have your full thought. You need to be thinking. You need to be moving. If you're going to get through the next place, if you're going to get to the next place in your life, you're going to have to sit down and get your mind together. Okay? Sometimes that's why you can't deal with people. You got to, hey, man, I got to get my mind together. Okay? I got to get my mind together. All right? Are y'all with me? The Bible says four guards. I'm, I'm going to give y'all these points. I'm done. I'm going to give y'all these quick points and then I'm going to get out of here. It says four guards were watching over him. Four guards were watching over him. Have you ever noticed... Oh, Jesus. Have you ever noticed that you always got an audience when you're in trouble? Whenever you're in trouble, it's an audience. It's always. A... And now with social, it's an audience that's loud. They like to speak about stuff that's going on in your life. But I believe that God gives you an audience on purpose so they can see the great works that he's about to do in your life. Hear me right here. Some of y'all can go back to people and say, and, and they'll look at you right now and say, oh, you look different. Oh, you different. Oh, oh, it's something different about you. Yes, it is the Holy Spirit that has been working on the inside of me. It is the God that has taken over my mind, taken over my thoughts. And, and, and now, yes, I am different. I am di I was called to be different. I was called to do something different. I walked through a new door. Somebody say doors. So there's three things that happened really quickly. I'll give you these three things. I'll, I'll give you these three things. There's three things that happened in the story. The first thing that happened is revelation. Somebody say revelation. revelation. The first thing that happens is the angel comes into the, the, the cell and the Bible says he shines a light on Peter. 
He shines a light on Peter. See, this is what you need. You need a revelation of who you are. You need somebody that can shine a light on you and say, hey, man, I, I, I know you're in this prison, but you're better than this. Hey, man, I know you're in this prison, but what you're going through won't, won't define you. You are greater. You are better. You have purpose. God's called you to do something, be something, to live in a greater way. You need somebody that will just shine a light on you. All I needed, I just needed somebody to shine a light on me. I knew I had something on the inside. Oh, man, maybe it's just me in here. I knew I had something on the inside. I knew I had greater on the inside of me. I knew God wanted to do a new thing in me, but I needed somebody to just shine a light on me. This is what church is supposed to be for you. It's supposed to be revelation. I'm using this time to illuminate. My people, God said, I'm using this time to illuminate my people. So it's not just about coming here and, and, and jumping all around and getting hot and sweaty. What it's about is using this time to be illuminated. God, illuminate my thoughts, illuminate my mind. There should be things that I say up that I say up here. There should be something I say up here that connects with the baby that's on the inside of you. And all of a sudden, a light turns on and things start changing back at your house and things start changing back at your job because something happened. Something I said shined a light on something that was in your life. And I wonder if there's anybody in here who's had a light shined on them. Even today, if you've had the light shine on you, can you give God a prayer? right where you are so 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 it's about revelation God is shining a light in some of your situations sunlight is the best disinfectant the problem with a lot of us is that we try to hide everything and that's why nothing's changing because everything's hidden You're so worried about what people going to think about it, how they going to feel about it, what they going to say about it. Stop worrying about what everybody else going to say. I got to get my life together. God, shine a light down on my situation. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. If you want it to be cleaned up, you got to let some light in. You can't clean in the dark. I'm, pre I'm preaching so good. If y'all are getting this. You think you can disinfect your own life in the privacy of your own life. Some things need to be revealed, opened up. Say, hey, hey, um, hey, PD, can I talk to you? This thing been happening. Well, let me, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Kevin, can I talk to you? I'm trying to get some, some meetings off of me. Pastor Kevin, can I talk to you? There's some things that's going on in my life. I just want to let you know because, because what will happen is that revelation, oh, hear me right here. That revelation of what's going on in your life will also hold you accountable to it. It's, it's hard to stay asleep in a prison when the light's been shined in that room. It's hard to stay asleep in a, in a relationship when the light's been shined on the fact that it's not working. Or that he out here in these streets. Oh, Jesus. It's hard to stay in something. So you need accountability for it. Are y'all with me today? You need accountability for that thing. So, so, so the first thing God says is, he says, I'm going to shine a light in there. I'm going to fix some things, but I'm, I'm going to start by shining a light on it. The second thing he says is this. He's, it, it, it's affliction. The Bible says he shined a light in, but then he hit him. You keep wondering why you're afflicted because you're not changing. The light wasn't enough. The light got shined in, but you still didn't change. So God said, okay, now I got to, now I got to, what? Pastor Dante, God don't do that. Yes, he do. The Bible says I chastened the one who I, you want to know what chastened looked like? Maybe you should have saw me when I was about five years old and I was bad. And then you saw my mama. Chasing. <laughs> Some of y'all think I said chasing, but that's the same thing. Yes, chasing. <laughs> chasing. God, the Bible says God chastens the one he loves. He loves, and oftentimes you think you 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 think you're being punished. You're not being punished. You're being woke up. God will just wake you up. Just you. He, 
He wasn't punish you, punishing you when you lost that job. He was waking you up to new possibilities, to new opportunities. He wasn't punishing you when that person left you, when that person walked away with, from you. What he was doing was saying, there's better, there's better. You need to be... The Bible said the angel hit Peter. Some of y'all, I know this because I pastor you. You call me Pastor Dante. <laughs> you won't believe what happened. I will. God's trying to get your attention. Wake up. Pay attention. Wake, wake up. Wake up. He did the first thing. He shined the light on it. You didn't change. He shined the light on that situation. You didn't change. He shined the light on, on that bad relationship. You didn't change. So now he said, okay, now I'm going to pop you. You better stop that. I'm going to give you a pop pop. That's all it is, is a pop pop. Amen. That's all it is, is a pop pop. In fact, in 2 Corinthians, Paul told us, he says, for, for this light affliction... <laughs> Which is but for a moment, work it for more exceedingly the weight of glory. See, some of y'all need to be able to understand that it's just a light affliction working for your good. It's just a little pop pop. But it's working for you. Somebody say it's working for my good. It's working for my good. When you get to a place in Christianity where you understand that everything God does is good then you can celebrate even the bad notes because you know in the, in the totality of the symphony, it's working for my good. Come on and give God a praise if you know it's working for your good. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 and 18, for this is just a light affliction, which is but for a moment. It's just for a second. It's just for a second. Don't start tripping out. It's just for a second. It worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Temporary. But the things which are not seen. Are eternal. So the angel had to pop him real quick. He had to pop him real quick. He had to pop him real quick and say, wake up. Wake up. All of a sudden, as soon as Peter woke up, the chains fell off. This, this should be revelation for you. Because God, God saying, the chains you made, the chains you made for yourself, they'll fall off when you wake up. When you, when you, when you get to the point where you, you, what's the point in coming to church if you're not going to believe nothing I say? This is not some petty stuff. I want you to hit me right here. If you can't receive it into your heart, if you can't receive it into your mind, then, what, then it's not changing you. Do, you. do you understand where I'm coming from? So, so God oftentimes has to give you a little wake-up call. He gives you a little wake-up call to say, and, I, and I've got to the point in my Christianity where I just pay attention. I'm not, I don't want to get popped. I'm like, no, I need to fix that, God. I just shine the light over here. Okay, God, I see what you did right here. I'm going to fix that. Oh, shine the light over here. Okay, God, I see. I see. I need to be better right here. I need to be a better husband or better father. I need to work on some of these things because, because I don't want to get pop pops. <laughs> so the first thing he does, the first thing he does is revelation. Second thing he does is affliction. The third thing he does is resurrection. No, I'm done now. Y'all y'all waited too long to shout. That's it. It's on. He told him, he said, get up quickly. Somebody said, get up quickly. Yeah. See, you have to have a get up in your spirit. The way forward for kingdom-minded people is up. Okay? So that before you can go that way, you got to go this way. You got to make up in your mind, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up from this bad situation. I'm going to get up from this bad situation. Even from, I, I'm going to get up from this job that don't appreciate me, don't care about me, ain't paying me what I'm worth. I'm going to figure out how to get back to school. Figure, don't just quit now. I mean, y'all like, PD, God popped me. What happened? Well, I quit my job and then... No, you ain't being popped. You did. These are your chains. <laughs> but God said, okay, I'm going to give you a, a new revelation of who you are so that you can move to where you're supposed to move to. And you will not go through a door if you don't have a revelation about what's on the other side. You won't go through a door. I want to tell y'all a quick little story. I'm, I'm done. I want to tell y'all a quick little story. Uh, me and my kids had went to Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> 
Now, I just want to be truthful with y'all. You know, sometimes as a dad, you try your best to be tougher than you are. Now, just keep it 100 with y'all. You know you're not that tough. Now, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about y'all. You know you're not that tough. But when you got kids, especially when you got, like, little boys, you got you, you to gotta be tough, man. You got to show that you're tough. Uh, and so, and so uh, we went to Ripley's, believe it or not, and, and, and we're going through sort of the haunted part of Ripley's, believe it or not. There's a whole little, there's a whole little, some of y'all too Christian to go in there. Don't worry about it. Just, you, you know, yeah. So, but we went in the haunted part, and the kids, is, you know, they're like, Dad, uh, Dad, you're going to go with us through the haunted part? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we going and stuff jumping out, eyes trying to scare us and everything. And I, and I made it. I, I'm good. Pastor Niles, I'm good. We made it all the way through. And we get to the place where the exit is. And at the exit of the haunted part of Ripley's, believe it or not, there are three doors. Okay, so. There are three doors. And they say in order to exit, you got to choose which door to go through. Now, I didn't, I've didn't. made it, you know, so far. Did I, I got to remind y'all first, I don't like to be scared. I don't pay people to scare me. I just don't do that. I don't give you money so you can scare me. Y'all go to these haunted places, you give people money to scare you? I get scared about real stuff. I get scared I'm going to get pulled over or something. I'm, I don't need to be scared at the... I used to get scared at the ATM machine. <laughs> scared when I run my credit card around. Lord Jesus, come on, Jesus, make it work, Lord. <laughs> but in this scenario, there are three doors. And what I was just saying, to, to put this back in context, is that you never, you never want to go through a door that you don't have revelation about what's on the other side of that door. So I walked up to those three doors. Savon was with, I don't know where Dominique was, but Savon was with me. I walked up to the three doors. He said, Daddy, which door are we going to choose? I looked at door number one. I was like, well, that's the obvious choice. If I go through door number one, they're gonna, somebody going to jump out and scream. Ah, I'm scared of living daylight. And I was like, number two is probably the obvious choice, too, because it's the middle. And if I get somebody go through, ah, I'm scared of living daylight. Look at number three. I'm thinking, I ain't that lucky. If I open number three, somebody gonna open this door. Scared of that. There was a. Oh man, I can talk about this more next week. But there was a man, a, a, a steward, a usher. He was sort of the guard to those three doors. I want to help you with something because some people in your life. Oh, there are two kinds of people in your life, right? There's armor bearers and there's pall bearers. Somebody is helping you to get to your future, and somebody is carrying you to your demise. You got to be paying attention. So I look at my man, and I said, all right, don't play, man. Which one of these doors let us out? And he looked back at me, and he said, you don't want to choose? And I said, no, no, sir. No, sir. I don't want to choose. Which one of these doors? Let us out. I don't want to play no more. I want to go out. I already read I don't want to play no more. And he said, the truth is, all three of those doors is haunted. The way out is this way. He, he was an armor bearer. He got, I didn't go through none of those doors. Because I didn't have a revelation about what was on the other side of those. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, I want you to be careful what door you choose in this season. God's trying to reveal some things to you. He's trying to give you revelation about who he is. But you got to be paying attention to what door God is trying to guide you through. And for some of y'all, the options you think are the only options you have aren't it. For some of y'all, God said, no, there's another option. You, gotta, you need to be paying attention. You need to be praying. You need to be listening. You need to be speaking to the right people. There are armor bearers and there are pall bearers. He said, he said pay attention. There was somebody who ushered me to the right place. These people here, we promoted these people and all this. There's people in this church who want to usher you to the right place. And you keep thinking, I got to pick 
one of these doors and you don't realize that there may be another option for you. There may be another way that's different from the way your mama went, different from the way your daddy went. You don't got to get divorced because everybody in your family got divorced. You could do something different. But you need somebody to point you in the right. Say, God, point me. So that angel, after he shined the light in the room, and after he uh, gave Peter a pop pop, the Bible says he took him by the hand and he guided him through the doors. We'll talk more next week, but I want you, I want to, I want you to identify your angels this week. Identify the people in your life who who trying to guide you to the right place. Who are trying to usher you to the right place. Because there are people in your life who love you, who care about you. And if there aren't, I am. I do. If you don't have nobody else, you got me. I care about you. I love you. I want to help you. The doors you think are your choices, you got more choices. I want to present more choices to you. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to do me a favor. All these people are moving because they, they, they want to present you with some other choices. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we're going to say a prayer. And I believe if you say this prayer, you mean it in your heart, God will come into your heart and change your heart. If this is you today, I want you to do me a favor. Repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I make a choice to go through the door that leads me to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now with every head bowed and every eye still closed, I, I want you to do something today. If that was you and you said, Pastor Dante, I made a decision today to live for Christ. I made a decision today to live for Jesus. I, I, I want you to do one more thing. I want you to just raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Now I'm going to count to three. And when I get to the number three, feel free to raise your hand. If you made a decision today, one, it doesn't matter who you came here with or what they think about it. The only thing that matters is your relationship with Jesus. Two, I'm asking you to trust God. Take a step through the door. I believe God has so much more for you. But today, today is the day for salvation. If that's you today, three, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. I believe that somebody's coming to pray with you. I be come on, come on, come on, come on. Today is the day for salvation. Today is the day when everything changed. Today is the day when everything changed. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. If it's still you, will wait. If it's still you, will wait. I want to do something else. I'm led to do something else. Listen, today if you said, Pastor Dante, today I believe I believe that I heard the voice of my pastor. I believe that I, I, I don't know how I got to the service. I don't know who invited me. But I believe that today, uh, today, uh, I believe you're supposed to be a part of one of these, one of the most amazing church experiences in our city. If that's you today, do me a favor. Just right where you are. Nobody, it, it, nobody's worried. Nobody's going to talk about you. But we just want to celebrate you. If that's who, you, if that's you, if you say, I want to be a part of this church body, I want you to stand up on your feet, come down this aisle and take my hand. I want to be your pastor. Come on. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you, I'll wait on you. Come on, come on, come on. And all the God chasers are celebrating. Come on. And all the God chasers are celebrating. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's good. Come on, come on. If it's you, if it's you, if it's you, come, come on, come on, come on. Take my hand. Tell me your name. Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. Tariq. Tariq. Everybody say welcome, Kimberly and Tariq. Welcome to God Chasers. Y'all do me a favor. Follow that young lady right there. Tell me your name. Anna. Everybody say hey, Anna. Do me a favor. Follow that young lady right there. Follow that young lady. Come on, God Chasers. Put your hands together. Listen, I want to remind you today again, find your angels. 
There are angels that God has placed in your life. There are people, they're going to help you get through the door. I think in this season, hear me right here, I want to help you get through the doors. There's some, there's some places God has for you. It's on the other side of maybe a little bit of affliction. Maybe some of y'all have gone through some things and say, Pastor Dante, you don't understand what I've been through. What I'm telling you right now is I don't have to understand it to help you through it. All I have to do is take your hand. If you take my hand, we'll get through it together. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. In fact, stand up on your feet. Let's just celebrate God today. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate God in this house tonight. This is morning. This afternoon. I got my days mixed up. Come on, y'all. Y'all can do better than that. If it was the Dallas Cowboys, y'all would be clapping. If it was the Super Bowl, y'all would be clapping. If it was San Antonio Spurs, y'all would be jumping. Hallelujah. Y'all may have y'all seat. Hallelujah. Wasn't it an amazing, amazing service today? I love it. Doors are going to be open. Doors are going to be open, but it starts now. I really, really took a lot away from the service today. Revelation, affliction, and then resurrection. I want to share with you something that really touched my heart. If y'all want to take a peek at my notes, I'm going to share you with my notes that I came uh, away with. And we're still in worship, but we're at the time of the service where we worship with our giving. And one of the things that I just really want you to understand is that just like Pastor Dante said, that if you want those doors to be open in your life financially, it starts now. It starts in October. It doesn't start in January 2020. It starts right now. And so I want you guys to join your faith with this amazing church here at God Chases Community Church. We love you so much. Everything we do for your kids, everything we do for uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, did I say it right? Everything that we do here, it is because of the love of God and your giving. So today, I want you to give yourselves a hand for being just such an amazing, generous church here at God Chases Community Church. And we believe the Bible from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelations. And one of the scriptures that's my favorite is Malachi 3.10. It says, bring ye all the tithes and to the storehouse. A tithe is 10%. Everybody say 10. Everybody say 10. Now you can start wherever you want to. But 10% of your income is God. All of it is his. Everything you made, everything that was given to you, all the clothes on your back. But God only asked us for 10. You know how much the restaurant asked me for? 15%. You know how much they tried to charge me for this pedicure? The, the tithe on this? It was like 18%. But God is asking us for 10 so Malachi 3.10 says, bring ye the tithes into the storehouse. Trust me in this. Watch and see, will I not pour you out a blessing? So here at God Chasers, we have many ways to give. You see our amazing servers that are walking up the aisle so you can give from your seat. You can also text 84321 from your iPhone or from your Samsung or from your HTC or from your Google Pics or from whatever device that you have, you can text 84321. Text the amount of money, it sends you back a link, you fill in your information. You can also go to connect.godchasers.cc and you can go to our app, that's the way I give, or you can meet us outside in the foyer, the closet, right there, and you can give at the cash register. You can also pick up one of these shirts, GC. All right, so with that, we're gonna pray. Father God, I am so excited about what you're going to do in this season with doors, of opening up new doors, of opening up opportunities. Lord God, shine the light on our finances. Shine the light on our finances. Reveal to us what you want us to do, Father God, as we move into this season of doors and opportunity, Father God. Lord God, bless the tithe. Bless over and above those who would give an offering, Lord God. Bless their homes, Lord God. Bless their cars. Bless their vehicles. Bless their jobs. Bless their children, Father God. And bless the obedient givers, Lord God. Let this seed go deep into the ground so that it can bruise forth much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys are free to serve. And now, here's what you need.